God is not vindicating me. God is not setting this straight. Mm -hmm. God is not seeing me. God doesn't know. Now, again, Sunday morning church people, we're going to be like, God knows. Mm -hmm. Oh, praise God. He knows. We don't really believe it in our daily life. Mm -hmm. Lisa, welcome back to the happy hour. Thank you. I'm so excited. You're like a regular co-host now. Listen, I am honored to be on this amazing show. I'm so happy that you're here. Um, uh, You are releasing a book in a couple weeks, but first we have to talk about something else. Mm -hmm. Two things we need to talk about. Okay. Number one, today is our friend and Ivy Media podcast co-worker and the editor of this podcast, Angie Elkin's birthday. So happy birthday, Angie. Yes. She's like 27. Absolutely. You know, living her best life. The second thing that you and I need to talk about is that yesterday, season two of Launch aired. I'm telling you, I'm so excited about this, and I hope people love it. Okay, so Launch is a podcast that it's only our second season, but we created it for parents by parents is what I say. Like, you and I both have seven kids between us. Our kids are age 25, Mm -hmm. 25 to 15, so Mm -hmm. we've got all those ages. And we really wanted a podcast that would encourage parents in whatever stage of life they're in as they're launching them into something else Mm. we talk about a lot of things so honored to do this with you and we have a lot of fun and go there in a lot of places yeah we did this season especially this season's really really good i think the episode that aired yesterday was about um, parenting when our kids have different personalities Mm. which that's all kids right Right, everyone has different personalities yeah um so we do that and we talk about money we talk about how we talk about race yeah we talk about time management marriage all the things yeah Super exciting. So that came out yesterday. So but you're here. In case someone doesn't know, where do you live? What do you do? Tell us about you. Mm. Live in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, write books, uh, speak, Bible teacher, podcast, and uh, run something called Call Creatives for speakers, writers, uh, creative entrepreneurs, and do a thing called Ministry Strong. We have retreats in our barn behind our house so yeah all kinds of stuff wear a lot of hats like you when you just said that out loud Mm -hmm. I was like you do a lot of things yeah do you think that because you know your youngest is 20 she's Mm -hmm. off at Baylor sick she's off at Baylor Mm -hmm. do you think that even just that the kids being in different life stage has helped you be able to do this now could you have done this when you were raising young kids um couldn't have done it when I was raising young kids no way I did pieces of it Mm -hmm. I'll say that so I was writing when the kids were little to some degree, I, not little, little, but, you know, as they were getting, I don't know, older elementary school, I started writing, but never could have done all of this. No way. It's seasons of life. And I think when you're in it, when they're little, you're thinking, oh, I want to do this, 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 and this, you know, if your brain, mm-hmm. my, I'm, I'm a creative, so my brain's always going, yeah. but sometimes you have to wait. You're not there yet. And 100%. That's hard. Yeah, that's hard. You and I both interviewed Beth before the release mm-hmm. of her book um, that came out in February. And when I was reading her book and even just seeing her life from afar for a while, it made me think about Beth, how many years she taught Sunday school in her local church. <laughs> and right. I remember saying to her, like, I knew you did this, Beth, but that was a long time. I know. She was talking about 40 years of women's ministry. 40 years. I mean, I'm 44. Right. I mean, epic. I've always been impressed by that because I know it happens to you. It happens to me all the time. People say, I want to do what you do. Mm -hmm. And first of all, I just stumbled into this. Like, (laughs) I don't even know what I'm doing. (laughs) Right. Um, But I'm always like, who are you teaching? Where are you leading? Mm. How are you investing? Like, it doesn't just happen. And I look at you and you've done that. You've been doing this for a long time. Mm. You know, people, I've heard people say like, I want to be the next Beth Moore. It always strikes me, right? <laughs> Please don't. We you only have that, one. Right, yes. right. No, we cannot. There's uh-huh. one queen. Let's, let's, that's all we need. But no, I've heard people say that. And I know the sentiment is like, I, I, I think the sentiment is I want to serve Jesus. I'm going to believe the best. 100%. Me right? too. Right. I want to serve Jesus for the long haul. I admire her. Like, let's go with that. Thing. But if there is this sort of piece of like, I want to be famous like Beth Moore, let's maybe uncover that for a second. That's that is not about what Beth has ever been about. Right. The, it's a, been about like, where can I serve Jesus in the local space? Mm-hmm. What does that become? Like the Lord just does that. Yeah. I don't want to act like there's no hard work involved. There's the hard work of plowing. There's the for hard sure. work of keeping going when you Mm -hmm. want to quit that's been my story Jamie I mean throughout 
when I started writing in, I don't know, whenever it was, 2006, I mean, it's been a long, been a while, man. Mm -hmm. When I started writing, it wasn't with the thought of like, this is where I'm going necessarily. I wish I was that calculated, mm -hmm. but it was really was, I feel compelled by this. And I kind of just put one foot in front of the other. But along the way, many times I wanted to quit. I've talked to you about yeah. that multiple mm -hmm. times, probably on the show yeah. some, but I just kept feeling compelled by the message or the Lord, or at times when he pulled me up and pulled me out, when there were moments that I was this close mm -hmm. to quitting. Yeah. And so it, it, it really is the journey, yeah. It is something that there is this intriguing part of that, like fame and stage. Mm -hmm. And I think personally that we have done a disservice to that by elevating that so highly in so many ways that the people would assume this is the only and best way to do ministry. When I'm like, this is like the least way to do ministry. Yeah. Like <laughs> rolling up into a church and speaking on a Friday, Saturday night and then leaving, you the ministry is like the woman who's there on, on Monday and Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, week after week after week. Yes. That's where the ministry is done. Let's not be confused about that. But I'm always like, I just can't help it that these are the giftings that God has called me to do. And this is what it is. I was reading just recently and I'm going to butcher it. So don't even go try to find it in Exodus somewhere. But God was giving all of these rules and all the things to the people about the temple and everything they need to do. And man, your book, we're going to talk about God knows. I thought about you so many times because mm -hmm. I was like, God cares so much about the little things in our life. As I'm reading Exodus and he's like giving them chapter after chapter after chapter yep. after chapter of things to do. I'm like, God cares like he does. But in one of the chapters, it said they had listed all these people and it said the gifts that they brought and they brought all of their own personal gifts, their skills to the table, and it helped complete what God asked them to do. And I was just like, man, that is what the church is. Show mm -hmm. it with what you have. Show yes. with what you can do. Yes. So many times when I come into a space and I am ministering for the weekend, right? Like I'm preaching, I'm there ministering. I think about the people that are there in the trenches that are there long after I leave. Mm -hmm. They've been there long before I come. Mm -hmm. it, it really is the least of these when I go and mm -hmm. do it. You know, yeah. it's a, that is the least of the ministry when yeah. I come and do it. Mm -hmm. I consider it a support work for what they're doing. And I always think, please notice the women here. Yeah. Please use the women mm -hmm. here because they are gifted. Yeah. They have things that God really wants them to do. And um, so I never, I never take for granted what God allows me to do, but I also never embellish it. Yeah. Do you know because, what I mean? Because it's the thing that's, difficult is that we are walking out in the giftings that he's given us yes and we're walking into the spaces that he's asked us to go so right. we can't like deny that mm -hmm. but you want to tell you something that's cool about my church i go to a really large church and um when they do their women's retreats do you know who speaks of their women's retreats the women inside the church i hope the women inside the church love it isn't that crazy i love, I love it. every time i've spoken there like twice and i do this for a living yeah and i'm just like this is amazing this I is exactly <laughs> I, I, and there's a space for us. We do this. It's our job. There's a space for that. But I love that when they host a women's retreat for the women of our church, mm. they're saying, hey, yeah, these are the women that are leading. That's, you know, to me, that it's a no-brainer. It's also making sense. It is, it's really what we should be doing. I'm not trying to talk us out of a job. Exactly. I mean, please, we, we would love to come yeah, to your church. Please, please still hire Jamie We would love and me. to come preach right. to the church. Yeah. And I think there's space for that. 100%, like, of course. You know, I remember, listen, my dad was an amazing preacher, but... I do remember when there was a like a fresh wind that would come in with someone else who had yes. a different word. Mm -hmm. That is the beauty of it. I'm just saying there it's it, it's not just about bringing someone yeah. in. You don't have to rely on that, right? It is. There's there there there's a word inside here, and there might be a word outside here. It's like what do we need now, and and assessing all the time, and also working together. Yeah, that's the way I look totally, at it. Yeah, totally. Well, I want to talk about a new book that you have that comes out in a couple of weeks, April 18th, and I've heard you say this, and I think that you probably might have said this publicly last time you were on. But you've called this book the end of a trilogy. Mm -hmm. And so I would love for you to catch us up to speed before we even talk about this book. Mm -hmm. That the only trilogies I'm I know of are from like Tolkien, <laughs> Star Wars. Star Wars. <laughs> so tell us how we have a trilogy here and where this all came apart. I call it a trilogy. My publisher does not call it a trilogy, by the way. It's not on the cover anywhere, by the way. I don't way. know if it's cool to call it a trilogy. Here's why I call it a trilogy. Because the Lord very clearly gave me three messages for the church mm. in literally 2018. And these were the three. Jesus over everything, 
the hard good and God knows. And the truth is, Jamie, God knows was the first message he gave me. Mm. But the interesting thing about it is, and, you know, part of this is just like the pub- publishing world, but, you know, certain messages they kind of want to go first. and yeah. go, It's just a process. I didn't want to write Jesus over everything. I think that's really hard to put into words in a book. You know, we believe it. It's a great statement, you know, but that took a lot of Mm -hmm. process of thought and the Lord, um, the hard good was really, really hard on me because it was a a book. If you've ever read it, you know, that, that was um, a lot of introspection. I actually said, after I wrote a book called I want God years ago, I'm never going to write another book that talks about and helps us process us. I only want to ever talk about God because I believe that we get better in our own lives by learning more about God. Mm -hmm. And so it was interesting because the hard good was a little bit of a departure from that. And I thought, what are you doing, Lord? Uh But uh, one of the things I've said about the hard good is that it exploded my heart, but writing God knows exploded my brain because I had to really dive in. This book has been studying the omniscience of God for the past five years. And I, I believe this is a trilogy because there's a process here. Jesus over everything is about priority order. So it's really about. Which I feel like is a great starting point. Kudos putting to your Jesus publisher. first. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, they were they they know better than they knew better than me. <laughs> so I, I really agree with you. Kudos to them. Um, but it is it's a starting point. If, if Jesus is not first in your right. life, what other what, mm-hmm. what else matters? Like yeah. everything else falls apart. So it is the priority order. And then you've got the hard good, which is about showing up when you want to shut down. And so much of my own life and my own story has been, I don't even want to show up for this. This is hard. This is too much. And so it is being able to see how God can make good of all the hard. Mm-hmm. And then there's this last word, which is, I need you to know. Oh, I'm getting the chills already. God knows what is going on in the world macro and your world micro. Mm-hmm. And for me, Jamie, I started this process five years ago when I was having night terrors. And I needed to know that there was someone bigger than me that was had this thing. Like, And I'm a strong person. Mm-hmm. And I like to control things. But I thought if someone else isn't isn't on this, like I, I'm not going to be OK. And for me to feel that way was a real moment. And the Lord spoke to me while I was in church. and He said, I want you to study the book of Nahum. And I thought, well, that's the weirdest thing in the world, because if you've ever read the book of Nahum, first of all, there's not much to study. There's mm-hmm. only three chapters mm-hmm. in the book. Also, it's just not a real comforting book. Right. And I need to comfort. And so. That was led me on a process of five years of studying the omniscience of God, because Nahum is much more than what you think it is. And it's the sub story, which is what a lot of the Bible is. But the first thing I found out about Nahum is that the name means comfort and relief, Mm, which you needed, which I needed. And so but that is really how it started in 2018 with literally the Lord gave me three messages. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what they would become, Mm -hmm. but they were these kind of three words from the Lord. Yeah. I want to start with something that just to clear the ear here that everyone might not understand. When you say omniscience, Mm -hmm. what, what, how do you describe that? What's the definition of that? Well, one of the cool things in this book is that I actually put definitions because I think we need to know and understand people have defined it differently, but it's basically God's and only God's Mm -hmm. infinite knowledge of things past, present, and future. This is actually, Jamie, an attribute of God. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't mean it's it's not what he does. It's who he is. It's who he is. Mm-hmm. So it can't be altered. It's also an action, which is what's interesting to me when I've been learning about this. For us to know something, we have to take another step by which to make something happen, right? Like we have to act upon what we know. Mm-hmm. That's not the same with God. His knowledge is an action in and of itself. That already blows the mind. Right. I'm so I'm just don't even try to try to process it. it. Right. 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 It, that's what I'm saying. The whole thing is not to be actually understood. So in the five years that I've studied this, here's what I've come to conclude. I do not understand God's omniscience any more than I did because I'm a human brain and it was never to be understood. What has happened for me is that I have grown to have complete confidence in it to the point where it has changed the way that I walk through this life 
with rest and reliance upon more than myself Mm -hmm. about things that I will never understand. And that has changed me because I'm a person who, for one thing, not only likes control, but I struggle deeply with things like injustice. And so for me, if I don't believe that God knows more than I do, and he is going to make things right, for instance, I I have a real hard time. Hmm. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I want to talk about injustice in a minute. But as I was thinking, as you're talking, everyone's different. We all have different things that are harder for us and easier for us. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember a couple of years ago when I started to really um, wrap my head around this idea that you're talking about as well, not on this deep of a level, but really just think about the sovereignty of God. Right, right. I remember one thing I had a conversation with someone about, and I was like, I actually find great comfort in the fact that I don't know. (laughs) Because to me, if I knew, then I would feel inadequate. Mm -hmm. Then I would feel as though I couldn't solve the problem. Then I would feel like I had all this weight to bear. And so as someone, I also tend to be the person who's like, well, other people will get this figured out. (laughs) Like, I'll just show up and they're going to figure it out. Yeah. And so it brings me great comfort, but I also have had to wrestle with it a lot in areas of this, like injustice. Yes. I've really had to wrestle through it. And I think so many times, I'm going to say this and you may disagree, I think a lot of times people get where they might, um, what's the word, the D word, we're deconstructing. Mm -hmm. People might deconstruct their faith usually because I think they go through some sort of suffering injustice Mm -hmm. and there was no foundation of trusting this and so then they feel like everything's crumbling yes instead of the injustice the suffering but having that solid ground of like trusting right in God's omniscience his sovereignty that he knows yeah do you think that that we see that happening I think that's absolutely true I think no matter what our personality is Mm -hmm. okay this world is such a formidable foe that at some point, Jamie, I don't care what your personality is. Oh, a hundred percent. You cannot grapple with the things that you're dealing with. And at some point it will become overwhelming. Yep. At some point you're going to want to control it. Mm-hmm. Like at some Every, point. Yes. And what's so interesting is, you know, of course everything goes back to the garden. Everything goes, goes back to Genesis, but You know, the one tree, the one tree that we were not allowed access to, Adam and Eve were not allowed access to, the tree of knowledge Mm -hmm. of good and evil. Because we could not handle the knowledge piece, Mm -hmm. right? But the other thing was, as as I was looking back and, oh gosh, so much research into the Old Testament and, and, and all of the things there. But the fact that you know, in Genesis 2, when it talks about when God breathed his ruach, his mm-hmm. spirit mm-hmm. into Adam and Adam became nephesh, a living soul, right? This created a relationship of reliance. Mm. That moment created a relationship of reliance by which we were meant to have reliance upon God, not just for our very breath, mm-hmm. but for our life, for our decision making, for our knowledge. But but since that moment, humans have been trying to wriggle free from that idea. Right. We don't want to be reliant upon yep. God. We don't want to be reliant upon anyone. And I speak to this in a way of full understanding because I love being autonomous. I'm I, I used to call myself the Lone Ranger like that was some kind of a prize. Right. You know, just do it myself, whatever. But at some point that won't be enough. And, you know, we're getting to the point in this world where we're finally going, you know, that reliant piece is one. It's not working for me. We might not say that, but that's what we're saying. And so I'm telling you, either God's omniscience is true or or nothing's true. Right. Or nothing's true. Mm. Or you have nothing or you are hopeless or you have reason to despair. If, though, it is true, you have reason to rest. You have reason to live differently. Mm. And I know that there's a whole lot of life in there. Mm-hmm. I know there's a, mm-hmm. whole lot of, there's a whole lot of day-to-day in there. But I'm telling you, if you believe 
if you believe that this is truly an attribute of God, then inside that attribute, you have to understand that all other attributes exist because God right. can't separate himself from right. himself. Mm -hmm. So the other attribute is God loves, God cares, God sees, God all that. So within that idea that God knows, everything else is working mm -hmm. in the same mm -hmm. sense and it's all for you. You know, I say often that if you can't preach a message in prison or you can't preach a message mm. in a third world country mm -hmm. or you can't preach a message you know in the slums of kenya mm. then you can't preach it That's in good. your local church in That's america good. and as i'm listening to you speak i'm mm. like this is a message that is preachable yeah because it is true mm. everywhere and it doesn't matter if you're living in the slums of kenya or you're in charlotte north carolina mm. we still face things that cause us to wonder is God in control? Mm. And so basing everything on that, it changes. I'm telling you, I I got full body chills. I, I'm just telling you, I could weep. This message for me, I'm telling you, there. I just feel, I think about the people everywhere. I think about my own life. I think about moms in the middle of the night. I think about my own night terrors. That by the way- Tell me about your night terrors. Till, they still haven't gotten away. You know, it's interesting. I actually talked to my counselor friend not long ago and I told him about night terrors. He goes, you know, night terrors can be neurological. You know that, right? And I was like, no, I actually didn't know that. Yeah. But I had neurosurgery when I was a baby. I don't know if you knew that or uh -uh. not. My middle soft spot in my on my head, you know, where usually you kind of feel uh -huh. that pulse, was closed prematurely. So I had I had neurosurgery, two months old. I wouldn't have known there would be any correlation there. I also do feel like there's definitely a spiritual component there mm -hmm. because oftentimes I'll have these night terrors um, when I am doing things in particular, um, like projects for mm. the kingdom. Like when I'm I'm writing really strong books that talk very pointedly about God and things like that. And so, I mean, we all, we all experience spiritual warfare in this world. Uh, we might not always recognize mm -hmm. it, but I think it's true. Whether you think that's woo woo or not, anybody listening, but I firmly believe it's true. I've seen it in my own life. Uh, we do wrestle, um, not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers of this world. And so um, I'm telling you what would ha what will happen sometimes, and I still have them uh, occasionally, but waking up in the middle of the night, just gripped by fear, uh, sweat, uh, and it's not menopause. I've, I've been there too, so I know the difference, guys. <laughs> um, but just, just this, this gripping fear, Jamie, bl just a, a black, you know, a blackness, and the fear that my my family's not okay, I'm not okay. It's a, it's a very real thing, um, and so I have to pray through them to even be able to settle my heart rate, and much less go back to sleep. I had a child with night terrors. It yeah. was the scariest thing to watch. It's terrifying. It was the scariest mm -hmm. thing to watch. Because mm -hmm. sometimes you're not even really awake. They, he would be calling for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, here's my four-year-old. Mommy, mommy, mommy. And I'm, I'm like, baby, I'm right here, I'm right here, I'm right here. Yeah. Mommy, mommy. He'd be so scared. Yeah. We had someone come pray over our house, too, because well, of that. And I think, I think sometimes one of the things, wow, I mean, that is, and that's terrifying, especially to watch in someone else, by the way. I think some of the things we don't realize, and there's a lot of, you know, there are some neurological things at play, and I'm, I'm not trying to be a doctor here, and I don't know all, all the nuances. Dr. Whittle. Yeah, no, <laughs> definitely not. But um, here's what I will say. I do think there's a lot of things that um, we don't regard, and even in our subconscious, mm -hmm. you know, I carry a lot of people's burdens, even as they come to me, yeah. if I go speak somewhere, or people send me messages, especially after the hard good, because there's a lot of grief that people carry, mm -hmm. and I've read that, and I, I, I carry that, mm -hmm. you know? And um, I do think there just is an overwhelming feeling. Sometimes I am so overcome by the needs and hurts of this world that I, I think I've carried that to sleep with me. Mm -hmm. And I think in the middle of the night, those things have, have just been overwhelming. And those are the moments where I believe that the Lord has ministered to me the most and said, I've got this. Mm -hmm. I'm on it. Mm -hmm. by, by the way, you're not running things, Lisa. Yeah. You're not the savior of this world. And also... I've got your kids. I mean, there's somewhere in the book I talk about how I woke up in the night and there was a, the, a old hymn that came to my mind, How Firm a Foundation. Mm -hmm. And every time, anytime something like that random happens, mm -hmm. I always go research it. I'm going right to Google. I'm like, yeah. okay, well, what's the significance of How Firm a Foundation? I couldn't really find anything of great significance. So I just looked at the words and that was the significance. It was How Firm a Foundation. And I write the words in this, mm -hmm. you can read it in the book. And God just spoke to me. He said, I'm the firm foundation. Yeah. It's not you. 
It's not all your plans. It's not all the way you keep your kids safe or you think you are. I'm the firm foundation. Mm, that's so good. Uh, in your book, um, God knows when your worries and whys need more than temporary relief, which again is all of us in all seasons of life. You you talk through a lot of God knows, and I'm going to read them all, and we're only going to we're only going to talk about one today because we don't have all the time in the world. But God knows your need. Uh, God knows you need relief. God knows your dreams. God knows the vindication you seek. God knows your secret struggles. God knows your limits. God knows your past. God knows your future. And God knows what you need to release. Uh, I want to spend the time today that we have just talking about God knows the vindication that you seek. And uh, you start this uh, chapter. It was a it was a kind of a funny story. We don't need to tell it because people can go read it. But it made me giggle. I just want you to know because I could see <laughs> young little Lisa just going in for the vindication. Mm. Um, but the the short end of the story is that someone had said something gossip wise, and you were going to make it right. Yeah. And you say in your book, you said both things can be true. Gossip is wrong and we can also be wrong in how we go about trying to vindicate it. I, I want to talk about that for a minute. And there are so many injustices in our world. There are so many things. But we sometimes get vindication and biblical confrontation mistaken. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and and I love you do give so many definitions in your book. And you define biblical co confrontation and you give scripture for that. But I think one thing we do this is, well, well let's just do this. Why do you think we want to be vindicated we want to like pay you deserve something we're going to pay you back what does that look like why do we do that well i think that vindication is a natural desire that we have yeah and i don't necessarily think that's wrong so you know we want to be vindicated because we want our name cleared we want a wrong to be made right mm -hmm. i think there's that desire in all of us and some of us have that stronger than others mm -hmm. i mean i'm that's my mo like right i want the, <laughs> i want the record to be set straight i think that that's natural in some ways as human beings because we don't like to have inaccurate information yeah especially if it hurts someone mm -hmm. if it's you know against us or someone that we love like so vindication and of course it says in the bible i will vindicate mm -hmm. right it, the problem is we want to vindicate right that's where we go woefully wrong yeah more than that we want to pay back so this is like a payback thing that we think in some way we can vindicate ourselves we can pay someone back and the motive there is what's at play but the difference there is is between like vindication and vengeance which mm -hmm. i outlined in the book yeah right. i was going to ask you like what yeah. is the difference between that well vindication is that natural desire to have the name cleared vengeance is about pursuing revenge at all costs with our methods that we prefer so you can see the difference there the focus is on us versus God, mm -hmm. right? So we don't want to wait on God. Mm -hmm. We don't want to wait on God to clear right. our name. And here's the truth. I, in my life, Jamie, I've had my name cleared in some situations. And in some, I never have. Yeah. And that is where you have to know that God knows. Mm. I mean, I write this in the book, but I'm telling you, the reason I write this in the book is because I needed it. Yeah. And it was this statement. It is okay for you and God to know the truth mm. and no one else to ever have known it. That is hard. It's so hard. That's a hard pill for me. Yeah. It is okay if only you and God were the only two to ever know it. Mm -hmm. um, but it's been needed in my life to, to, to go to that because there are some moments, here's the truth, we can't control anybody right. else. So at the end of the day, if I fight to have my name cleared, or someone to know my side of the story, mm -hmm. someone to believe me, I can only hope that they will. Mm -hmm. I can only tell my side. I can only be who I am. But they're going to come with their biases. They're going to come with their belief mm -hmm. systems. And they may never believe me. Yep. It may never be right, this side of heaven. Yep. So what if only God and I ever know the truth? Mm -hmm. I've got to be okay with that. Yep. And so that's where this omniscience thing comes into play. Mm. Because if God knows about it, and I trust him, and I trust that he's going to work something out on my behalf, then I can rest in a different way. Mm -hmm. I may still want it to be made right, but vengeance would be me going into, like what I tell in the story in the first part, would me be taking matters into my yeah. own hands. And I can tell you what happens when that happens, because it's happened. Mm -hmm. Things get real messy. Yeah, Things get real messy when Lisa tries to 
uh, payback yeah. or vindicate herself. Yeah. That's why one of the reasons I don't know the mind of God, but I think that's one of the reasons why he says vengeance is mine. I will repay. Please let me do this. Yep. Lisa, Cause you're going to make a real mess of it. Yep. Yeah. You say in here, you said the base, the best way to seek vindication is to let God who is fully aware of the situation, heal you from it. And, and that's, <laughs> that is the best way. Uh, I wanted to tell you the story real quick. A couple summers ago, there was, I'm trying to figure out how to say this without vindicating myself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, a couple summers ago, there was an article written about our family in a national newspaper. Yeah. And that article caused me to be asked to not come speak at a few things. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that happened. That was public knowledge. Then I had a conversation with somebody from these institutions. And it didn't go how I think was good, mm -hmm. fair. Mm -hmm. And the newspaper came back and said, would you like to give another statement? And I wanted to so badly. Yeah. Because I wanted everyone to know my side. Yeah. I wanted them to hear from me. And I, I I, said, let me think about it. And I talked to Aaron and I was like, you know what? I just don't think it's the best way for anything to go forward. Hmm. And it wasn't like even that I needed to clear my name. But it was just that moment where it was almost like the Holy Spirit saying, how about you just let me take care of this? Yes. Oh, yes, Jamie. And all I wanted to say was like, well, can I please have one more shot? Right. Just kind of have one more statement. Yeah. But but that wasn't going to do anyone any good. Yeah. It and, was going to be more messy. And as if you were going to need to handle a little bit because like you were going to be able to handle it better. Right. I mean, it's like we wouldn't say that. But yeah. it's like that's what we think. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean. And I'd be lying if I said I don't think about that sometimes. Like sure. if I would have just da, da 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 But honestly, I can say that I trusted God in that moment. And I 100% never doubted that it was the right thing. But there was something in me that was just like just one little thing, one little next word, one little statement. Mm -hmm. um, and the thing is, I think that a lot of people are living some really bitter lives. Yes. Because they're just constantly trying hmm. to fight a fight that was never theirs to fight. Yes. I think what you're saying is so important because here's the thing. We think somehow that we need to help God out, but also do this you know, okay, God knows, yes, I'm going to give it to God so that I will obey God. So it's like, yes, I'm going to be a good soldier in this. But what I, I need us to realize is that in releasing this to God, right, which I talk about in the book, like God knows what you need to release because relief of the spirit leads to this release that we need. Mm -hmm. It's like release and relief go together. When we do that, we do live differently without this bitterness, without this angst, without all of that jumbled up inside. Like, do we not think there's a payoff mm. in trusting in the omniscience right. of God? I don't know. I, th I just think we get caught up as Christians so many times with the task stuff and the to do stuff and the like, OK, well, all these rules. Yeah, I'm going to obey God. Like, what a good Christian I am. Do we not think it's not for us? Like, mm. God doesn't. God didn't, God didn't make things and, and God isn't who he is without things for our benefit in his great graciousness for us. Mm. These are things that are difficult. Yes. It's difficult to not tell our side of the story Yes, because the word fair is like at the tip of our tongue at mm -hmm. all times. Like it's not fair. Yeah. So many things are not fair. I mean, period, full stop, mm -hmm. not fair. The thing is, how do we want to live? Yeah. It's not even about fair at this at mm -hmm. this point. It's like, how do we want to live moving forward yeah. in the unfairness that has happened to mm -hmm. us? And I mean, that's why I did like this chart. Here's an unhealthy approach to things that feel unfair. Mm -hmm. And here's a healthy approach. Yeah. It's not letting someone off the hook. In fact, like I, I talk about like here is what has been done to you. Mm -hmm. Acknowledgement. Yeah. Yes. And by the way, the 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 injustices they're not all created equal mm -hmm. like there are there are different levels of this that happen yeah. in this world yeah so i mean all of those things are at play it's it's this chapter was at first so long we had to divide it we had to edit it to death because uh -huh. there were so many things at play in this yeah. whole matter of injustice you said this you said um his 
speaking of God, his healing will be more thorough because he knows what you know and more. (laughs) In this relationship of intimacy, your pain lessens as your relationship of trust with Jesus grows. This is how people truly become better instead of bitter. God loves them through the process. Yeah. And I love that because it was letting us know as a reader, you may have had bitterness in your past. You may be bitter now, Mm -hmm. but God can move you through a process of letting that go. That's hopeful because... Bitterness is not just like the old lady at the end of the street that nobody wants to talk to who feels like a bitter old woman. <laughs> we can have it in us. And it, like someone says something and like even me telling that story, I'll be real honest. There's yeah. a part of me that's like, oh my God, it brings back bitterness about that situation. Mm. And I don't think I'm sitting there, all the things, but it gets just there. It grows in us. And, and you know, one thing you say this, and, and I want to talk about this. You say vindication doesn't feel as good as we hope. <laughs> no. Not needing it feels better oh man it's it's true jamie because i've lived both of these this is so close to home for me this like you talk about bitterness and Uh i'm like god has been pounding me about bitterness for the last six months like lisa let's look at the bitter roots in your life you want to talk about something you don't want to do hello Uh uh-huh i mean I'm dealing with my own bitterness. Like, Lisa, where are you bitter? Where do you feel entitled? Like all of these ugly things I don't want to mm. talk about. Do you, and it's come down to this. Like, do you, do you really believe I know? Because if I know, you don't have to worry about wa- ways that you felt limited in your life, that people have limited you. You don't have to worry about places that, you know, you've wanted to make it right and, and set the record straight that you haven't been able to mm-hmm. do it. If you really think I know, and I actually know more than you. Mm-hmm then you're going to trust me with that. I think the great joy and peace bringer of my life and maybe even plot twist and shock has been that vindication, the thing that I have thought, God, I'm going to cry. I don't know why, because this is so close to home for me. The thing that I thought would be the best thing of my life, which is to just have everybody understand me and set the record straight, make everybody believe, you know, the best or the story or whatever, you know, in my own control, like Lisa can set the record straight, get the vengeance she needs, that the vindication she's want. Cause I've had, we've had rumors about my family. I've had people misunderstand me, whatever the case may be. The great plot twist and joy of my life has been when I've allowed God to do it and I haven't needed it anymore. Mm. And I've been able to just go on and say, you know what? If they never know the real story, Mm -hmm. I have peace. And I don't know, Jamie, if for a lot of years I thought that'd ever be possible. I thought, oh, I'm going to have to do some real um, damage control Mm -hmm. here. I'm going to have to really like, I'm going to have to text that person. I'm going to be like, you do know the whole story, right? You do know my side of it. And there are still times I want to do that. Mm -hmm. Like there are people that I know might have heard something. I've been like, I want to tell them the the real thing. Mm -hmm. And God has just shown me now. You just let me do it. Mm -hmm. Because I've watched him do that. I've had people come back around that maybe uh, there was something that I I can think of a story right now that I won't go into the details of. But I can think of a story right now where there was something that happened. And I think it was probably three or four years later, I got a letter in the mail and they said, you know what? I didn't really realize what happened. Now I know. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry. And here's the thing. When you don't need that letter anymore, Mm -hmm. that's peace. Yeah, that is peace. I think a lot of people, the struggle would be, too, of like the timing of things and wondering because even what you're talking about you didn't need that letter but for some people they're like god's not working as fast as i think he should work (laughs) yeah doesn't god see what's going on doesn't god understand that the difficulty that this is and so a lot of people you write in here often our belief about god's intention toward justice involves how we feel about his timing Mm -hmm. timing is what trips us up a lot pain goes on too long for our liking and we become doubters and wanderers anew And I thought, well, isn't that just a summary of so much of my life of Mm -hmm. wondering, well, this, I feel like we should work faster here with God with whatever this might be. Yeah. And it doesn't feel right. Timing is probably the thing that takes down more people's faith than anything. Because what happens is in the silence of God, in the gaps, we fill in the blanks with our assumptions Mm. about 
whatever God's not doing. Yeah. Usually mm-hmm. whatever God's not doing. God is not vindicating me. God is not setting this straight. Mm-hmm. God is not seeing me. God doesn't know. Now, again, Sunday morning church people, we're going to be like, God knows. Mm-hmm. Oh, praise God. He knows. We don't really right. believe it in our daily life. Mm-hmm. But I'm just going to tell you, I've read a lot of scripture on, on the omniscience of God in five years, Jamie Ivy, And I'm going to tell you that I am convinced that he knows. I mean, when you read the book of Nahum mm-hmm. and you read about the absolute um, affliction of the Assyrians, the Nine- Ninevites, particularly of to the people of Judah. And this is the same Nineveh, by the way, that 100 years earlier had Jonah. done the same thing in Jonah's time. Now they're worse. When you read about that and you, you, you just see just this constant, constant um, suffering, you think, what, what is God doing? Mm. When, when's he going to make it right? And it's just this one, these little pieces, even Nahum 1-7 that says, the Lord is good and he knows those who trust in him. I mean, it's a little tiny piece, glass of water and mm-hmm. reprieve in there, all of that. But there's always the sub story and there is always that, hey, I'm here and I know. I mean, it's like Job when he spoke to Job. Finally, after all of Job's suffering in the whirlwind, Nahum, but reference back to Nahum, Yahweh, that the whirlwind speaks to the power and strength of Yahweh. Mm. Yahweh has his way in the whirlwind and the storm. Mm. And that is a reminder, by the way. There's strength and power in me. I have you, I see you, and I'm on it. And that's why to me, this I in the beginning, in the dedication, I dedicate it to my daughter, but also to everyone else to say, hey, just breathe because God's on it. Mm. Jamie, that continues to be a word for me mm. because I struggle as a human in my flesh to, to know that God is on it. Mm. And um, I can tell you he is. I want to close this. I didn't ask you this, okay. but we both have copies of your books. I'd like you to go to page 77. Yeah. And I would love it if you would read this entire page. Turning away from God in our pain is only taking our greatest relief away from us. We can be confused and even angry with God for a time and still get relief from trusting in him if we keep faith alive. The Christian life is more than anything, a life of great paradox. We are living while we are dying, and we are trusting while we daily battle doubt. Don't go through life holding your breath, hoping someone won't hurt you. They might, but that's no way to live. If they do, God will be there to help you. Don't put all your faith in another human who isn't capable of being perfect. They will be a huge letdown. God won't. Allow someone the opportunity to keep their word. What if they do? And if they don't? God will. And please, above all else, don't let the injustices that have broken your trust in the past change the person you are. Rudeness and woundedness are often the same person in different clothes. Bitterness often has a backstory. The desire for vindication loves to say the desire for vindication loves to stay in its cycles, and God wants to break them all. Because God knows about my life, I trust him to rectify that which I can't make right. So, so good. Um, Lisa, this book is going to be such a blessing. God knows when your worries and whys need more than temporary relief. Guys, go ahead and add it to your Amazon cart, add it to your Goodreads list. Um, it's it's the end of the trilogy. It's and the I'm, end so of the trilogy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy. I'm so happy because I've been writing books for the last three and a half years. You have been. Yeah, I'm tired. <laughs>